friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india you can see this is a hyper mature morgagnian cataract with turbid anterior chamber yes it is a case of faculitic glaucoma the patient came to me today with intraocular pressure of 56 mm of mercury with iv mannitol and other anti glaucoma medications the intraocular pressure has come down to 35 and i have taken up the case for surgery by this time all the incisions have been made now an air bubble is being injected into the anterior chamber i want to stain the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble and here goes tripan blue dye the dye should touch on all parts of the anterior capsule and now you can see something white on the anterior capsule let us wash the capsule let us wash the dye out and see what is there yes there is a fibrous plaque involving anterior capsule fortunately this is in the central area and i should be able to do a rexis around it and now let us see how the capsular rexis goes viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is filled up with this viscoelastic substance and now 26 gauge bent needle is taken the capsule is cut just beside the fibrous plaque superiorly and my idea is to do a spiral rexis to a small rexis around this plaque first and then do an adequate size rexis and now here as i come near 12 o'clock lot of milky fluid comes out from the capsular bag and it obscures visibility so i stop here ask for a 23 goes simco and i want to wash this milky fluid out yes as i wash the milky fluid you can see the free floating nucleus and the visibility has improved and now i inject 2% spmc again and take the utrita forceps again hold this capsular tag and do this adequate size to rexis so if there is a fibrous plaque at the central part we should be able to do a rexis around it now visco is injected and th this is the time to introduce the fecal needle into the anterior chamber this is oatly ecitif the machine being used is oatly catarex 3 and now let us see how to manage a free floating nucleus the tip of the fecal handpiece is introduced and the nucleus is held with bevel down the bevel of the tip is towards the nuclear mass because in free floating nucleus if you try to hold the nucleus with bevel up what will happen is the free floating nucleus will move from one direction to another direction these two air bubbles were disturbing a lot and i could not remove it so i'm um, going to displace these two air bubbles with 
two percent SPMC. Here it is. And now I introduce the tip of the FIGO handpiece again. The jonule appears okay in this case, and that's why I didn't use a capsular tension ring in this case. The tip is again introduced with bevel down, and now see how to hold the nucleus. First attempt failed, then I, yes, with bevel down I could go into the substance of the nucleus now moving through the nucleus and here it is you can chop it very nicely but in this case there's some leathery fibers and the two pieces didn't get separated completely and now 90 degree apart this is another crack And now I rotate 180 degree. Hold the other hemineucleus. Go through it for a distance and make a good crack. Yes. And now this piece is being divided into two uh, smaller pieces. And now let us start emulsifying these pieces. The two free pieces are being emulsified. Ultrasonic energy being used is 65%. Flow rate is 40 ml per minute. Vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury in this case. And now, very patiently we have to do this because the posterior capsule may come forward. There can be some amount of trampoline of the posterior capsule. You can see that the people has constricted a bit and the iris is tending to prolapse through the side port but still the people is size of the people is okay about 5 millimeter or even more 5.5 millimeter and this is enough for continuing the surgery and now at this moment I thought the posterior capsule is coming forward. So at this moment I came out and decided to use intraocular lens as a platform. And over that platform I want to emulsify the remaining piece of nucleus. So injecting viscoelastic substance and now this nuclear piece is being brought at the central part of the people At this time we can see only this piece. Later on we will see another piece hidden at 5 o'clock. Now here goes the intraocular lens. This is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. And here the lens goes behind the nuclear piece into the capsular bag. The leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is being dialed into the capsular bag. Here it is. It has gone into the capsular bag. And now 
some more visco. I want to check. And now this piece. This is another piece of nucleus. It was hidden under the iris at 5 o'clock. And this piece has come near the main incision. I should have taken it before going to 5 o'clock piece. Anyway, with little maneuver, I could remove this. And now, I'm going to polish the posterior capsule going behind the eye wheel. Yes. I'm going behind the eye wheel and polishing the posterior capsule with only irrigation. We can call it hydro polish. And now you can see that and this is sweeping all around because the protein molecules can be there in the angle. Now I am giving a transnolone wash. Transnolone acetate has been injected. Now these side ports are being hydrated. Now see what happens when you inject fluid through the side port. We cannot see this kind of fluid movement. But here you could see how much movement occurs when we inject fluid through the side port. And now the transnolone particles are removed. Few particles will remain here and there and that will cause decreased anterior chamber reaction in the postoperative period. Only concern was if the patient is a steroid responder, this transnolone acetate wash can raise the intraocular pressure and it can be a problem. But we have followed up this case. The intraocular pressure is only 14 millimeter of mercury. The antichamber is formed nicely and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.